Hey, Tim Bistasio here. It is Psychrometric Saturday, and we've been talking about wet bulb temperature and how wet bulb temperature takes into account not only the heat that's in the air, but also the heat that's in the moisture in the air. It is the diagonal purple line, as we see here. We've also talked about last week that when our operating point is closer to the saturation curve, that we don't have a lot of potential for evaporative cooling. But, for example, in Las Vegas, Nevada, when our operating point is really, really far away from the saturation point, we have a lot of potential for evaporative cooling and that opens up an opportunity to provide cooling without the use of refrigeration. Now a swamp cooler is very very popular in dry arid climates like Las Vegas, Nevada and here's why. If we start out here with our operating point way down in 107 degree dry bulb and 66 degree wet bulb so that intersects right here really down in this far corner. Now as that water starts to evaporate we know there's a cooling process that takes place and what is happening in that process is that air follows the wet bulb line all the way up until it hits saturation. Now that's uh, the point where the air leaves the swamp cooler and it's somewhere around right here. Well what's those conditions? Well it's around 66 degree dry bulb and 66 degree wet bulb that air is saturated. Now that may not feel like very cold air but you got to remember something about Las Vegas Nevada. The indoor conditions are going to be somewhere way down here. Remember the humidity is really really low in Las Vegas and so when we mix that air coming out of the supply registers with the air that's already in the room, our room becomes somewhere around here in the mid 70s and around 40 to 50 degrees of dew point. Now that is very, very comfortable. Now is the swamp cooler as effective in Atlanta, Georgia? Well, let's find out. Again, here's our operating point for Atlanta, Georgia. We're at 92 degree dry bulb outside and 74 degree wet bulb. When we start uh, throwing that air across the swamp cooler, we don't have as far to travel. So our air coming out of our supply registers is around 74 degrees dry bulb and 74 degrees wet bulb. It's saturated, but it's pretty warm. Now remember, we're trying to maintain around the mid 70s in our temperature and around 50 degrees of dew point uh, inside. So when that air comes out of supply registers and mixes with this air in the room, the result of the air that we enjoy is somewhere around here. And let's just face it, uh, around 70 something degrees dry bulb and 65 degree dew point is not very uh, comfortable. And there is a huge potential for some microbial growth. So that's why we don't see swamp coolers in the southeast because of the humidity and the climate. We're operating way too close to the saturation curve. Now there's another use for evaporative cooling in HVAC and that's cooling towers. Cooling towers spray water across the material and that water cools down and that water is sent back to a chiller. The condenser can reject some more heat. Now if you take this same cooling tower in Las Vegas, Nevada, it has a huge potential for evaporative cooling. That also means that the water leaving the cooling tower will be a lot cooler than it would be in Atlanta, Georgia, where there isn't as much potential for evaporative cooling. So what that means is that you cannot pluck this same cooling tower from Las Vegas, Nevada and use it in Atlanta, Georgia and expect it to have the same performance. So cooling tower design takes into account the dry bulb, the wet bulb temperature of the air that that cooling tower is being installed in. So there's a lot that we've covered today. The main thing that I want you to understand is that we follow the wet bulb line when we're using evaporative cooling. But that is the assumption that the water that is evaporating is the same temperature as our wet bulb temperature. But what if that water was chilled? Well, it would not follow that wet bowl temperature line. It would follow a flatter line. Let's say that water was chilled to 50 degrees. Well, then we would follow a line here that would take our leaving air temperature coming out of our unit. And that leaving air temperature would be around 50 something degrees dry bowl, 50 something degrees dew point and wet bowl. That's very, very cool, crisp air. We can do a lot of cooling and dehumidifying with it. If we were heating that air higher than our wet bowl temperature, then the track would be a lot more vertical and our air coming out would be somewhere around here. Not a lot of uses for that, but we do just want to remember that evaporative cooling, if the water that's being used to evaporate is the same temperature as our wet bulb, we're just going to follow that wet bulb line. We're going to trade sensible heat for latent heat. We're going to trade dry bulb temperature for moisture. So you can see we're in a climate like Las Vegas, we have the potential for doing that. We're way down here, there's not a lot of moisture. We, we can gain some 
some moisture and give up a lot of dry bulb temperature. But in a wet climate like Atlanta, Georgia, we don't have that kind of potential. And that's why evaporative cooling is not as effective in climates like the Southeast where there's a lot of humidity. That's all we're gonna talk about this time on Psychometric Saturday.